Welcome to virtual class. Okay, I think I think it's recording. There we go. We're in school. Okay, so we're doing math, and today we are going to be focused on doing some fraction math. In particular, we're going to be looking at uh, moving towards adding and subtracting fractions, which, as I mentioned before, I think is harder than multiplying fractions. Multiplying fractions is actually easier, if you ask me. Uh, the concept is kind of difficult to grasp for multiplying, but the actual like how to algebraically using a couple of simple math tricks, which we're going to do today, uh, that is actually quite easy. So I'm going to get my document camera on here. I'm going to uh, pull this up. Don't forget, you're going to want to do the practice questions that are posted in the Google Classroom. Uh, right up here, uh, we're working. Uh, if you want to work ahead, it's section 9.1, and uh, the assigned questions are posted in Google Classroom. Now, without further delay, uh, I also want to explain, remind you about this. DJQ is effectively, uh, if you answer the question, you can get, um, you can get uh, your choice in which song you want to play for the class. Now, of course, I won't record that and post that anywhere, but you know, you can pick something. It can be you know, copywritten if you want. We're only, it's only in our class just to listen to while we're working. All right, so if you just want to jump ahead and dive into the work and you know how to do this, just jump to it. It's right here. But if you want the lesson, uh, please come along with me as we dive into some fraction math. So I think my camera's working. Looks like it. So now we are going to do some really simple math, but I want to do that. Start out simple, get more complicated as we go. Okay, so first things first. When you're dealing with fractions, you want to remember that it's a little bit like when we dealt with integers. If you add something and then immediately take it away again, the value on a number line doesn't actually change. So let me get my tools out here. For some reason I misplaced my favorite pen. There it is. So I've got my, my speed square here, which I built most of my basement with. Uh, so here, just so we can know what we're talking about, let me throw a number line up here real fast. And just to remind you that uh, the values on a number line in terms of fractions uh, tend to fall between the main whole numbers. So if we got number one, two would be here, three would be further down, there's our zero. It also goes negatives. Uh, I know you're thinking to yourself, wait, wait, there's negative fractions? Yeah, it's true. Sorry. Yeah, it is true. But it's okay. You, you can manage those two. But for now, we're going to stick with the positive fractions. So <laughs> just, just trying to keep you entertained. All right. So uh, let's start with something real simple. We know that when we are dealing with integers, adding a positive, and then immediately taking away, uh, taking it away again doesn't change the value when you're dealing with integers. Uh, integers, right? So if you started at, at, let's say, one, and I add two, I'd be up to three. And then I take away two, I'd be back to one. So my value has not actually changed. So in this case, when you're dealing with fractions, and equivalent fractions, equivalent fractions, it, it's sort of similar in that if you're dealing with equivalent fractions, the value on the number line doesn't actually shift. So what I'm talking about is, um, uh, let me put it this way. If I take a number, let's say 23, and I times it by uh, 1, what, and you can type this answer in chat if you want, what is the value now? The easiest DJ question of the day. Hey, Ramin got it first. We're, I'm not going to, you can post it in chat and we'll play it after. I'll get a little cue playlist getting going. We might not play it immediately. So um, while... Now, watch this. I can times this also because, remember, we can take any whole number and chop it into uh, fractions. So if I take a granola bar and I chop it into multiple fractions, <laughs> right? I can, I can, uh, whoop, wrong button. <laughs> chop that into however many slices I want. Then it still doesn't change how many granola bars I started with, right? It's the same value. Oh, I see lots of 23s in here. I'm going to call it off there. Uh, let me uh, roll, because just to honor the DJQ thing, i got to roll the dice to figure out uh, which which one of your answers is going to count. And if I roll over five, 
we'll re-roll because it's only five answers. Ah, there we go, two. So that's gonna be, I think that's, uh, I think that's harsh, I think, yeah? Okay, so you're gonna, you can go ahead and post in chat your answer um, uh, for that one, okay? Uh, your DJQ. All right, so if I don't do it by one, instead I'm gonna chop up that one into pieces. So let's say it's uh, three possible pieces and I have all three of them, right? So I'm still dealing with the single thing, just with one granola bar, but I've chopped it into three equal pieces, yeah? So it the actual, that is the same. It's still just one granola bar. So instead of multiplying 23 by one, I'm gonna do it by 23 times three over three. What's the answer for that one in chat? Oh, okay. I, I see your answer there, Dave. Um, and, uh... Ooh, this is nice, relaxing music in the background. <laughs> this is my copyright-free music. Good times. All right. And I think I'm going to cap it there. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I get to roll the d6 again. I mean, is it six? I'm going to scroll up and just double-check. Oh, seven. So I'll roll my d8 just to figure out which one of you. And I do see your... Your link there, Harsh. We'll get that playing in just a moment when I'm not recording. Okay, so here we'll roll the D8. Love that. Uh, platonic, solid. There we go. Number seven. Wow. All right, right down at the end. Mitt, it's you again. So you can go ahead and post your link in chat. We're going to get these in the queue. I'm not going to play them yet, but I am going to put them uh, in the playlist here so that we can watch those once it's ready. Uh, so let's keep going. All right, uh, so you can see that if I times this by three over three, it doesn't change its value on the number line. It's still just 23. Now, because we can do this trick, it's, and a lot of math is that, it's it's just, you're, you're kind of balancing the idea of what does it look like versus what the actual value is. Nice, okay, so I'll put that in the queue. Thank you, Mitt. Okay, so in this regard, we can actually get away with doing fraction, uh, we can actually change the value of our fractions. Sorry, we can change what our fractions look like without actually changing their value. So I'm going to give a couple of questions here. Uh, a, B, C. And so let's start with the first one. It's going to be two over three. And I want you to make an equivalent fraction. This is going to be a pretty easy start where the it's no longer chopped into three pieces. It's going to be chopped into 18 pieces. How much is my denominator going to be? Okay, just put a little box around this so it's a little bit clearer what, which ones we're working on. And I'll do the next one as well. You can do A, B, and C uh, and post them all at once if you want to. Let's do that. It looks a little bit different, but it's still pretty straightforward, I think. Cool. And the last one here. Hopefully that's not... Oh, it's kind of off the screen a bit. Let me see if I can fix that. I can sort of fix that. There we go. So now you can see all three of them, and I just have to do that last one. Let's do something a little trickier. There you go. So if you can post your answers to uh, these three questions, A, B, and C, all in the same message in chat, we'll do this as a DJQ as well, and I'll get the next one up and ready. All right, I'm going to pause the recording for now, and we will come back to more equivalent fractions, adding and subtracting fractions in just a second. All right, so just a heads up, I am recording this lesson now. So uh, I'll probably patch these together. So as I see from your answers in chat, we have our answers here. So let's go through and figure out what's going on. First of all, um, the weird thing about math is when you're doing this, you're actually doing something that's not really visible, right? So what you're doing is you're running each of these through a factor, a factor. And the factor isn't actually written. I don't know if you can see that okay. So you're doing something to both the top and the bottom, and you do have to do it to both the top and the bottom, or it's going to change the value. So uh, I've got, um, I, uh, what have I done to the three to turn it into the 18? Well, I've timesed it by six, and I think you're probably typing that in chat, but I've scrolled up to see the actual answers. One sec, I'll dive, dive back down. Yeah, absolutely, thank you, Harsh. Um, you're timesing it by six, and you have to do it to both the top and the bottom, 
but you're rich really what you're doing is you're timing it by six over six really that's what you're doing and what that means is that you're not actually changing the value its place on the number line instead you're just changing what form it looks like so you times top and bottom by six you get 18 on the bottom and you get 12 on the top so your equivalent fraction is 12 over 18. this is you can also do this in reverse by dividing by the same uh by by one basically and remembering that when you divide by one you still get the same number you started with so in this case you're divide uh, going the other way if you're getting a smaller number to reduce and at 12 over 18 to its simplest form of two over three you would divide by six over six uh, so it can go backwards or forwards. Cool? So that one was correct. Let's do this one. In this case, you're not actually doing it in reverse. It just looks a little different. You're still doing the same thing. You're increasing the value. So you're multiplying, right? You're multiplying. Uh, this time you're multiplying by, I believe, 8, right? So you're multiplying by 8 uh, and a factor of 8 over 8. So still multiplying and it's going to be getting bigger, 8 times 5 is 40. Another way I think about this is, what did I do to the bottom number to get this new value that it's got to be? Okay, so that's going to be um, uh, 40 over 64. And this last one, it's quite a big jump, and we're still increasing our value. We're still increasing our value, and uh, this time by quite a lot. So what did I do to the 16 to get it to be 320? So in this case, I'm multiplying it by 20 over 20, right? And so I'm running it through that factor, the factor of 20 over 20, and so 20 times 3 is going to be 60. So your answers are 12 over 18, 40 over 64, and 60 over 320. So those who posted that in chat, I will roll up that dice in just a second. We'll get your DJQ all set. Um, now, somebody did ask, uh, Ramin, I think, asked, can you do this in reverse? Yes, you can. You can divide by a factor to reduce your fraction. And when you're reducing a fraction, that's essentially what you're doing. I hope that helps. Okay, so let's figure out who got the DJQ for this last one. Uh, I don't think I rolled for that yet. Ooh, it was way back up in chat. Here we are. Ah, uh, okay. So we have one, two, three, four. Did I see five? One, two some doubles here one two three four five six is that six or five i think that's just five all right so i'm gonna roll it oh you're in there too sure we'll roll a, a d6 so harsh is in there too you guys just like getting the djq all right so here we go i'm gonna roll you get to watch the roll on that, on that cam here we go that came up as a three so let me figure out which is the third person to have gotten that answer well this is way back in chat before we paused We got one, two. It gets a little confusing with the numbers. Three. Is that Hatarth? I think it's Hatarth. If you want to double check that, somebody can verify that. Pretty sure it's Hatarth. All right. So you can go ahead and post your link in chat. We'll make this the DJQ and uh, we'll play that in just a few seconds. Any questions about the whole factor thing? So find an equivalent fraction. Now I'm going to try one more tougher, slightly tougher one. Uh, at least a little bit different, uh, kind of what we were talking about before. So this is going to be question D. Ooh, that's a bit loud. Okay, so 6 over 27 equals something over 9. So go ahead and post your answer to that uh, in the chat, and we'll do yet another DJQ. And Hatar, don't forget to upload your, your link so we can give that a listen. In the meantime, if you're looking for some extra practice on adding and subtracting fractions, don't forget to check uh, section 9.1 in the Google Classroom. Cool? All right. Give you a couple more seconds to answer.
Ooh, got lots of people this time. I might have to break out the D20. I'm excited. Don't do the don't use that D20 nearly enough. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, I'm very excited. One of the least used dice here. I get to use the D12. Now that's not the roll, that's just to show you that it is a D12. Hey, what shape is that? All right, I'll, uh, Hattarth, I see your link. We'll play that in just one second once we're done recording, uh, once my computer stops messaging me. There we go. Uh, close, but not quite. Not, not quite on the shape uh, size. I see your answer there. Iso deca. Uh, yeah, not, it's not an isocahedron, I don't think. That's the D20. All right, I'm going to roll the D12. Here we go. Three. That is our answer. So let me go back up and see who was the third person. I believe. Oh, hold on. I think that's Maya. I think it's Maya. 93. Yeah, Maya. All right. Maya gets to share her link for our DJQ. I think that's it. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll have more DJQ. <laughs> There's lots of chat being like, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Ah, that's good. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, the input. So go ahead and link that in when I press pause again. We'll <laughs> you can choose whatever one you want to do. Uh, all right, so. Uh, Let's answer this up. So, of course, uh, this one is similar to the last ones, except instead of going by a large factor you're inst or multiplying by a, uh, a factor, instead you're actually dividing by a factor. So you're dividing both the top and the bottom by the same factor to get it to be this new uh, thing. So what did you do to the 27 to make it into a 9? You divided by 3. Now, you have to divide both the top and the bottom. In other words, effectively you're dividing by... 3 over 3, uh, which is still the same as dividing by 1, um, just it looks a little different. 3 over 3. And so 6 divided by 3 is dos, just the 2, so 2 over 9. So I hope that shows you just a little bit of what we're doing under the hood. But now we're going to change it up and do uh, addition and subtraction instead. Because, and I've said this before, when you're adding and subtracting fractions, uh, we're going to start with just adding, but it works the same with subtraction. When you're adding and subtracting fractions, you actually have to consider uh, that you're actually going to use that multiplying. Now, it's we're going to start real simple. I know this is overly simple, uh, but if the denominators are the same, you don't scats to do nothing, right? So if these denominators are the same, sorry, it's off over the side. If the denominators are the same, then you can just leave that thing alone. You don't have to do anything to it. Uh, you just uh, you just add across the top. So just like that, it would be you only add the numerators if the denominators are the same, giving you one, two plus one is three over three. That one I'm going to say is not our DJQ. I appreciate your input, but you're still welcome to answer in chat. And three over three, as we recall, can reduce to one over one, which is the same as a single whole, right? And I always drop the granola bar there because yesterday we chopped that up, right? So it's just one. And remember that any whole number is actually also a fraction. That'll come up later on. So um, out of w slices of one, this has one slice of one. All right, so that's adding in its simplest form. But sometimes those denominators are not the same. Sometimes they get a little weird. I'm going to give you a slightly trickier one. We're going to call this... Uh, what was I? We'll call this one E. Let's give you a slightly, a mediumly tough one here. All right, so go ahead. Uh, just to, to recap, that's 13 over 54 plus 6 over 81. So go ahead and work on that one. 
And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to pause the video and play a DJQ. All right, let's do this thing. Let's take this up, shall we? All right, let's do this thing. So, um, thank you for posting your answers in. Uh, definitely, you want it reduced form and when you're done. And I can see most of you have done that. I'm going to show you two ways to actually reduce this. But first, let's just get to the answer. Many of you realized, uh, okay, you need to find a common multiple. So this is where your idea of the LCM and the lowest common multiple, the stuff we did at the beginning of the year, comes in handy. You probably want to know how to do that. So um, you just make sure that uh, those concepts, you've got them handy. So what we can do is find a common denominator and then if we need to either reduce beforehand or reduce after. So if you look at these two, you could always multiply them together. When in doubt, if you don't know a common denominator, you can always multiply them together and that will be a common point. Although in this case, that's gonna be a really big common point. I saw somebody post that in chat. Uh, that was something like way up over a thousand. Uh, 4,374, right? So you could actually end up with a common denominator that high, but then you're going to need to reduce, reduce. It'd be like one of those uh, shows when they're trying to en enhance, 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 right? So that's going to be a bit of a problem. Instead, uh, let me just make sure that we're good now. Okay, so instead, we can actually try to find a, a slightly lower common multiple. So in this case, uh, I would probably go with 162. So if you realize you can times this one, and so in this way, I'm actually gonna do this three over three. So my factor in this case is gonna be three over three. I probably should have written that in a different, there's my red. So uh, the factor in this case is gonna be three over three. And so my denominator becomes 162. And on the top, I would end up times three, that would be 39. All right. And I'm still going to be just modifying this question before actually answering it. So on the other side, I'm not going to do the same factor, right? Because in this case, that would give me too high a number. I'm only going to do my factor of times 2 over 2, which then gives me 162 on the bottom. So now we've got that common denominator. And then on the top, I only have uh, times 2 would be 12. So now we've got the common denominator, I then leave it alone. I don't mess with the common denominator at all. I just add the numerators together, giving me 51 over 162. But some of you, as you noticed, you need to reduce it, right? So at that point, you then reduce it down after the fact. See what common multiple, uh, common factor you can pull out of 51 and 162. And if you do it, you can, anyway, you can reduce that down. But here's the trick. Here's the trick. Ready? So we can reduce after. But I want to show you a neat little trick about reducing before we even do this. And I did this with the other the other day with uh, multiplying fractions. So if this seems a little familiar, uh, that's what this trick does. So I can reduce this beforehand. I can pull out a factor. Now, when you're doing just adding, you can't do the, the cross reduction only when you're multiplying but you can reduce up and down so you can pull a factor out unfortunately 13 over 54 you can't reduce but you can reduce 6 over 81 both of those have a factor of 3 so I can pull out a factor of uh, of 3 from that reducing that down divide by 3 divide by 3 just this this one uh, fraction 6 over 84 so that will give me, uh, I believe that's 2 over 27. Kind of messy on the page, sorry. Um, one way to show this, by the way, is just crossing it off. So you cross off the old one, cross off the, and so I've got 27 on the bottom, and I've got 2 on the top. So then I can find a common factor between 27 and 54, which in this case would be 54. So I got 13 over 54. And plus, I'm rewriting this question as to, uh, oh, sorry, 4 over 54. Now I've got the common denominators a little bit quicker, uh, and so my common denominator would be 54, and my top, I just add my numerators, which gives me 17, which can't reduce any further. So 
If you want to reduce beforehand, go for it. If you want to reduce after, great. Whichever approach is totally fine by me. Any questions on how that all worked? If you want to type them into chat, you can post them on Google Classroom uh, or get a hold of me some other way. Pretty straightforward, right? Now, let's dive over to Google Classroom for a moment uh, and look at today's assigned work. I just have to find my page here. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, if you dive over to Google Classroom and take a look at the assigned page, it is page uh, 9.1. They talk about modeling, which is totally fine. Uh, I tend to prefer to think about it algebraically, sort of like with factors, the one we just did on the on the document camera. But if you would rather think in terms of uh, fraction strips or these, um, there's the one where it's it's like a rectangle, all right? Uh, so pieces of a rectangle filled in with the pieces and you just shuffle those around to find a new common denominator or a new common factor between different fractions. Totally do that if you prefer to think of it this way. That's the thing about math. It's mostly it's mostly about translating how you represent things and then the actual operations are usually pretty simple. So if you prefer to think visually using uh, uh, fraction strips or the uh, rectangle grid model, do that. If you prefer to do it more like uh, the um, like the algebraic way where I figure out a common factor and then add across the top, do that or subtract, okay? Either way is fine. There is no, uh, I want you, and by the way, if you want more of a challenge, try to understand it in a different way. So if you've got this way down, you don't need any practice with this method, then try the other modeling method. Give it a try, read it over. We've done a, a little bit about fraction strips before uh, and try to understand it in a new way and it can give you a new insight into what is otherwise relatively straightforward math. So I hope that clarifi uh, clarifies. I'm gonna go back and, and pick our last DJQ for the day uh, let's see, I can see, I'm just counting answers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think, although there might be some doubles, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, I think there was a double in there though. Am I, am I wrong? I think there's a double. Maybe not. Maybe there's 13. Oh, no. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to have to dig out the other dice. This may involve some re-rolling because it jumps. The only other one uh, that I have is a D12. Oh, there is a double. So we'll roll the D12. I was all getting ready to break out my uh, D20 here. I love the D20. It's a good dice. That's it there. That That is the icosahedron and the dodecahedron is your d12 so i'll get the d12 back out again because there is a, a double all right so here we go our last djq for now before you go work on those practice questions number one number one number one congratulations number one you win djq so go ahead and post your uh post your suggestion for the dj playlist into chat now and if, as always, if you have any questions, please make sure you ask Mr. Cleland in chat, or you can message me on Google Classroom. Thanks so much for playing, everybody. If you, uh, oh, and we have a message. If you are the owner of a blue toilet, your lights are on in the parking lot. Thank you. Good work, everybody. Thanks for coming. All right, in all seriousness now, um, one last thing I want to mention, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Come on, get in close. It's really important you get out of your chair, get some exercise, do some jumping jacks, do some yoga, go for a walk, do all of the above. Get out of your chair at some point today, okay? It's really important you take care of your body, your mind, your soul, and each other. Take care of your family as well. All right, uh, I see a little last DJQ is up there. I'm going to play that in a second while the rest of us are working on our... Uh, on our assigned work. I also want to say thanks very much. Uh, oh, that's question of the day. That's different. Uh, thanks very much uh, for if you're watching this after the fact or if you have any suggestions or clarifications you need, just let me know. And I'm going to post uh, all this in Google Classroom. 
and you can please work on the assigned work. Here we go, and we'll see you next time.